Trevor, let me need it. Josh, you don't need to need it. Trevor, it's bread. You gotta need it, buddy. What? Stop. I wanna touch it. Josh, your hands aren't even in my kitchen. What? What? Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams don't know what day it is anymore. What is it, Ferns Day right now? Who knows? Today, Josh, Trevor, and I are gonna show you how to make bread in three easy ways. Yeastless, flourless, and traditional. If you're following along at home, you can find the time codes right there and all the written recipes down in the description below. All right, so we've all seen these people on Instagram, right? They got their sourdough starter that they're treating like their pets or children, and they're baking these beautiful loaves of sourdough bread, which is very cool, but sourdough can be incredibly, incredibly difficult and often does involve food waste. So today we're gonna teach you to make three different kinds of bread that are a lot easier than sourdough. Some of these you don't even need yeast. We're really gonna try and make bread making as easy and accessible as possible. I love bread! I've never seen an episode of Oprah. Does she say that? I just know that people say that she says that. All right, so we're making beer bread today. A lot of people say beer is bread in a can, or <laughs> maybe it's just people who have a problem that say that. A lot of people say that there's yeast in beer. People don't say it. There's a fact. There's yeast in beer and that you can use that to actually get a rise out of bread. It's not like entirely true because most beers, the yeast is filtered out. However, the carbonation in beer is actually gonna help this rise in the oven, and it's gonna be just like a loaf of bread. I'm a sandwich guy. Like 80% of the meals that I eat are sandwiches, and so this makes like a beautiful kind of fluffy, spongy sandwich loaf, and it's perfect for stuff like grilled cheese, which I'll show you later. All right, so I'm using bread flour because I stole it from the office on the last day we were there and we happened to have it, but you can totally use all-purpose flour for this. So baking soda is what's going to give our bread rise instead of yeast. When you work with yeast, you have to worry about like proofing your bread and resting it and all that, and we'll let someone professional like Trevor teach you about it. But with baking soda, you're gonna get a rise almost instantly. It's two kinds of bread. You have like yeasted bread and then you have quick breads. That's things like biscuits, or you think about like banana bread or zucchini bread, stuff like that. This is essentially a savory quick bread. I have teaspoons right there, but I'm just gonna measure it out with my hand. A teaspoon and a half of salt, and then black pepper. Black pepper is just gonna give you like that little kind of fruity spiciness. So we're gonna add some black pepper to there. A lot of people think that alcohol completely cooks out when you cook it. A lot of people think that alcohol really cooks out. God, my brain's just fire and it's just like that, that, that. I was watching Jack Ryan earlier and when you're out in the field like that, man, you can't afford to wait because Suleiman is out there. So a lot of people think that alcohol completely cooks out when you heat it, which is not entirely true, especially when you are using a beer like this Black Plague IPA, which, oh my God, I'm so sorry uh, that I'm using a pandemic themed beer for this, but it kind of feels fitting right now and it's really delicious. What I'm saying is you're still gonna get a lot of that actual beer flavor, so use a beer that you would enjoy drinking. If you want like a nice dark molasses -y bread, use a stout or a porter. If you're just someone who loves the taste of Bud Light, one of four people on earth, Bud Light, please sponsor us, I take that back, then use that. But the more neutral beer you use, the more neutral your bread is going to taste. I kind of like the flavor of beer, so I'm gonna go with something heavy like this IPA. But first, Nicole, shotgun this. Ugh, I did it. Ugh, I'm gonna throw up. Oh my God, let's throw up fully. <laughs> I have to burp, but it's not coming. No, no. How do you make yourself burp? <laughs> Can't do it. <laughs> wait, wait, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> oh my God, Nicole, you've never done that before, have you? Trevor, show her how it's done. Frick. Mm. It's not even a beer. Exactly, because you are underage and underage drinking is a crime. All right, so you have all your dry ingredients mixed up, and now you're just gonna use a fork to do this. I'm using a fork instead of a whisk because I like to eat spaghetti with my whisk and whisk things with a fork. I'm quirky. So we're gonna go 12 ounces, that is one standard beer, and then we're gonna do about a third of the other beer. Doesn't have to be super, super exact. And about a third of it. Oh, God, it is really good. So we're gonna add in six tablespoons of melted butter. There's a trick to not getting your honey to stick to the measuring cup, and that is you grease it down with olive oil, I did not do that, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna finger all the honey out of there. Mmm! So your bread's gonna kind of be somewhere in between a dough and a batter. I call it a datter. The fork is actually kind of the perfect tool to do this, because if you use a whisk, then you're just gonna get a bunch of bread dough stuck in between it. Oh no, fallen soldier, Jack Ryan, don't leave him behind. <laughs> Woo! If you can see, it's like a little bit too wet to fully pick up with your hands, but it's not a fully runny batter. And that's what you're looking for in this beer bread when you break it, when you break it off, when you bake it down and break it off, 
uh, all the moisture is gonna not be. See, here's the thing. Bread is uh, not wet. Soup is wet. So you have a couple options of things to bake this in. You could use a loaf pan, but that's not gonna get you like super big slices of bread to use for a sandwich. And I'm a big slice of bread guy. So what I'm actually gonna use is this sauce pot that I have. It's oven safe up to 425 degrees, even though it has a silicone on it. You may have the same thing. So I have some oil in a bowl right here. You could use a pastry brush if you have it. You could, after your hands are washed, just dip your fingers in it, and then you're gonna lube up the side of your pan. Lube has such a negative connotation to it. I don't think it should, it's nothing dirty. Okay, so now you're gonna take all your bread dough. You're just gonna use something to scoop that all out. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in my oven. Is it 350, is it freaking broiler on? Okay. Great, so it's in the oven and now it's just gonna bake for, <laughs> I'm a classically trained mime from the French school of miming. So this is gonna stay in the oven at 350 degrees for about an hour and then we're gonna take it, we're gonna slice it up, we're gonna make a grilled cheese, I'm probably gonna drink the rest of that beer. First, Nicole's gonna show you how to make cloud bagels, which are novelty bagels themed from the movie Cloud Atlas. So we're gonna make something really, really cool, which is flourless bread, flourless bagels to be exact. Also, I'm pretty sure I have beer all over. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our oven and preheat it. Pre, <laughs> that beer already hit me to 300. And I'm gonna take three eggs and I'm gonna separate them in two different bowls. Put my yolk in there, throw it in the garbage and repeat, come on. There we go. Really important, if you end up getting any sort of yolk in your whites, it actually won't let it fluff up because the fat content helps keep the eggs nice and flat, which is what you don't want. You want them to be really, really fluffy and really, really big. So once I get like a little bit of foam, I'm going to add my cream of tartar. This is going to help with the structural integrity of our egg whites. This is also going to aid in the structural integrity of our whites. And then I'm going to continue my whisking. This is gonna take you maybe, if you're doing it by hand, like eight minutes. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's gonna be a process. But it really helps when you do this with someone you love, even if it's someone on FaceTime. Okay, after an arduous workout, we have stiff peaks. This is a great way to tell when you have stiff peaks, when it stands up on its own and it flops over just a little bit. Another way to test it and also to test your confidence with cooking is you just take the bowl like so and you flip it over your own head. Still looking fly. Josh, do you want to try this? Yeah, sure. This is going to work? Good job, buddy. You serious? So now that we have our egg whites beautifully floofed up, we're going to move on to our yolks. And I have room temperature cream cheese. If I can open it. And I'm just going to combine my cream cheese with my yolks until I get a perfectly smooth texture. I'm looking for something with no lumps and no clumps. Also, if you have a mixer or uh, if you have one of those handheld little gadgets, use them. I'm just trying to show you how to do it with the most basic of tools. But if you have it, please, Use it, because I'm sweating under this turtleneck. I'm gonna take a tablespoon. I'm gonna take a tablespoon of Parmigiano, Reggiano. <laughs> I swear, I'm kinda drunk. Looks good. Now I'm gonna take a spoon, and I'm going to slowly fold my yolks into my whites. You don't wanna just dump it in. You kinda wanna let it sit on the top like this in order to not deflate the whites. In a sweeping motion, I'm going to go under and fold my whites over the top like this. And you wanna do that until your whites and your yolks are fully combined. But again, look how fluffy it's staying. It's because I'm being very, very gentle with my motions. Imagine being gentle with your emotions, can't relate. Now, we're gonna take our sheet pan that we have lined with parchment paper. <laughs> parchment paper. Is this parchment paper or wax paper? Parchment paper. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of oil, which I already did, and I'm just lightly going to spray it on. This is gonna make three large bagels. Also a great idea to do this with a piping bag if you have one, or one of those uh, plastic bags, you can just cut off the tip. Works exactly the same. Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? You wanna make a larger hole than you think because the, the eggs are actually gonna kind of rise up and curve inside. So you want your hole to be large. That's gonna be a meme, isn't it? I'm gonna put them in the oven. And while I do that, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make bagel seasoning. 
everything bagel seasoning pretty much has sesame seeds, poppy seeds, minced onion, minced, minced garlic, salt. But even if you have some things that don't exactly mix, you can totally make your everything bagel seasoning. The first thing I'm gonna start with is chia seeds, three teaspoons. And then I'm gonna add three teaspoons of my sesame seeds. This is a really good seasoning, by the way. You can put this on chicken, fish, a flip flop, a wig, do whatever you want, girl. Two teaspoons of minced onion, two teaspoons of minced garlic. I found flax seeds and uh, some caraway seeds just because. Teaspoon of flaky salt. You can use any sort of like coarse ground salt. You can use kosher salt, you can use sea salt, whatever you got. That's everything bagel seasoning. These have been in here for about like five minutes. Use a heavy hand with this. And I'm just gonna sprinkle my bagels. Okay, those are thoroughly seasoned. Back in the oven they go for another 15 minutes. Do I have any seeds in my teeth? Look how brown they got. I'm so excited, guys. I made bagels without bread, flour. What? You know what I mean. So these have cooled down. Bone apple teeth. That's good. <laughs> it's almost like a flatbread that has a little bit of yeast in it because in your mouth, it kind of like coats your mouth in a very, very interesting way. Oh, my parents, good morning. Good morning. Hi, dad. Hi, hi. How are you? I've never had anything like this before. And it tastes really, really good. That seasoning is amazing. Next up, Trevor's gonna show you how to make a no-need white bread. What is that? That's crazy. Bread, four simple ingredients. Flour, water, salt, yeast. It's all you need. And you don't even, you don't even need need. You don't need to need it. I already have three cups of flour in my bowl because uh, I'm using the spoon and sweep method. Just wanna spoon it on till there's a little mound on top and then take the flat edge of the spoon and sweep it off. You can use instant yeast or active dry. Um, either one is fine, but it's gonna be a tablespoon of whichever yeast you have access to and then a half tablespoon of salt. Water time. Room temperature water is very important. If your water's too cold, uh, the bread will not rise the way it's supposed to. If your water's too warm, um, it will rise too much and you'll get tearing. And it is gonna be a cup. Okay, didn't think this one through. Use the half cup to fill the whole cup. Oh yeah, this is how the professionals do it. One cup of room temperature water into the bowl and then use the whole cup to fill the half cup. One and a half cups of water into the bowl. And you wanna stir it up until there's no loose flour left on the bottom of the bowl. So I got a nice, nice shaggy, shaggy rough dough ball. And then I'm gonna take this beautiful mythical kitchen towel and I'm actually gonna wet it. You don't want it to be damp, but just wet enough so that like when I wring it, like not any water's coming out, but it's got water. And then I'm gonna drape that over the bowl. And this bad boy is gonna rest outside of the fridge for two hours. And then after two hours, it is gonna rest inside the fridge for two hours. So I'm gonna go play video games for two hours with the dough resting next to my computer. Then I'm gonna take the dough, I'm gonna put it in the fridge, still covered. And then I'm gonna watch 21 Jump Street. Then I'll come back and bake some bread. Let's get to work. I'm just gonna take a little bit of flour, sprinkle it on top of the dough. I'm just gonna take like a kind of a fist size, like a softball size, a little bit less than. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of flour on my work surface. My favorite, I'm gonna make a ball, a or you boule it. You boule, that's what they told me in culinary school, you boule your dough. And the way that you do that is kind of just by cupping your hands, pushing them underneath the dough and spinning. So you're just gonna spin that and that's gonna draw all the dough, you can even do it with the fingers, kind of pinch it down towards the center. And if it gets too sticky, you just flour it up a little bit, flour your hands. And whatever you're gonna bake it on, you can just pop it in there. I'm just gonna drape an, that moist mythical kitchen towel over the top of it. I'm gonna let it rest for one hour. The dough has risen for about an hour. Our oven is at 450. I think she's ready to bake. Trevor, let me knead it. Josh. You don't need to knead it. Trevor, it's bread. You gotta knead it, buddy. What? Stop. I wanna touch it. Josh, your hands aren't even in my kitchen. What? What? All right, well, this is going in the oven. Oh, she's beautiful. It's a lot of hot air in my face. Wow. The bread is ready. It's bready. <laughs> oh, I'm hilarious. It's beautiful. There's a little bit of tearing there on the side. That's okay. Every loaf is perfect in its own way. I'm just gonna give it a nice little... Oh, it's so hot. Oh, she's beautiful. It's so spongy and tender. It's also still steaming. Oh, that's nice. That's a super tasty loaf of bread. It's spongy, it's soft, it's flavorful. It's got a nice crunch on the outside. Oh, it's so warm. Now let's check back in with Josh to see how that grilled cheese is doing. 
You got your beer bread straight out of the oven. I mean, it's not straight out of the oven. This isn't, ah, look at that. It's like a nice circular shape. It's dense, which is totally fine. That means nutrients are going into your body. You may get some cracking in your loaf, but like, don't worry about that. You're gonna be completely fine. At least you're not doused in water and hooked up to electricity. I'm just gonna slice this open. Look at that. Is it in frame? I don't know if you can look at that. Look at that. Oh, but it just smells like beer and molasses. It's gonna be fantastic and a grilled cheese. Is that too thin? Yeah, I want thicker boys. These are massive slices of bread. <laughs> grilled cheese, the key to grilled cheese for me is super low and slow. Because so many times you get the bread that's burnt and then the cheese doesn't actually melt on the inside, which to me is like the biggest travesty. I'm just gonna take some butter and I'm gonna add it directly to my pan. A lot of people will take it and they'll smear it directly on the bread, which I'm not a fan of doing. I like having a big old pool of butter in there. We get some butter heating over low and then we're gonna start building this grilled cheese sandwich. Since this is beer bread, beer and mustard is such an incredible combination. I'm just gonna add a little bit of mustard just to one side of the bread. Now, the most important part of a grilled cheese obviously is the love you put into it and the care with which you share it to the world. No, the most important part is cheese. The most important cheese in all of it to me is American because American gives you that like super, super meltiness. So I'm just gonna lay down a base of American in there. Another cheese, Munster. Munster doesn't have a super pronounced flavor, but it does have a really excellent texture. You're gonna get that like stretchiness. So we got the creaminess, we got the stretchiness, and now we need the flavoriness. So I got the sharpest sharp cheddar that I could find. And then you're gonna sandwich your sandwich. Give it a good press. And since beer bread is pretty dense, you're like really gonna need to babysit this low and slow. It might take you a solid 10, 12 minutes, but it's gonna be totally worth it. So we're just gonna let that sit there. And then I'm just gonna, inexplicably not dry myself off. <laughs> All right, so it looks like it's about done on one side. Oh, you dirty, dirty boy. I'm gonna take that out and then I'm gonna put more butter directly in the pan and we're gonna pop it right back down in the pan. Take something heavy. Throw that on top. All it's gonna do is ensure that all of the surface area of the bread is touching the pan. <laughs> it's gonna just forcefully mash all the butter into the bread. Right, so we've left the grilled cheese completely untouched on the other side. It's just sat in there and God, this is absorbed like three tablespoons of butter, uh, which is fantastic. You can actually see the oils from the cheese starting to seep out. Oh yeah, that is fully melted through. Patience is the key here. I'm like the least patient cook in the world. We're gonna sit here, eh, we're not gonna wait. It's done, I'm pulling it. Bread is crusty, the cheese is just so molten. Look at that, that is, what? What? We're going for a record here, folks. Mmm. Oh, it's so hot. Honestly, I would much rather have this awesome grilled cheese on beer bread as opposed to sourdough. You get such a beautiful, like, spongy texture to it. But also, what a better combination than, like, beer, cheese, and mustard. It just gives off this, like, you're, you know, drinking at your local gym and be a gotten. And it's just absolutely freaking lutely fantastic. God dang it, that is too good. Thank you so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new videos coming out every Tuesday and Thursday. Shut up, oven! Shut up! One more time, I swear to God. Thank you for joining us in the Mythical Kitchen. Let us know in the comments what mythical dishes you want to learn how to make next, and hit us up on IG at Mythical Kitchen, showing us all the pics of the cool food you've made with the hashtag Dreams Become Food. Also, a hot dog as a sandwich is back wherever you get your podcast. We had a new episode released yesterday. Go this, go, go, just go. I'm sorry, Josh, I think I missed you. Did you say your podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich is Back? Yes, Josh, I said my podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich is Back. Did you say to listen now wherever you get your podcasts? Well, yes, that is correct. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts.